Greetings from Denver, Colorado. Today is Thursday, August 31st, 2023. It is 10.38 a.m. Mountain Time. We're here outside of Union Station. I think this is one of the first times I've been here during the summer months. Usually it's during the colder temperatures or late at night. So it's nice to be here during the day. I think I was here during the day once, but that was like around, I want to say November? Unless it was February. It was definitely still uh, somewhat chilly outside. But you can see a glimpse of part of the downtown Denver area. But what I am going to be trying to do is walk toward the Colorado Rockies Stadium and then go beyond that because there's a River North Arts District that I have never been to. Usually when I've gone through Denver and I've done layover videos, because that's what I'm on right now, a layover, I've gone that direction. Uh, I did check out the Rocky Stadium once, but then I headed back the other way. So it'll be nice to see how extensive the artwork is. But I wanted to start here and kind of do a full walking tour video. I mean, I'm not going to be able to cover all these murals, but according to online, there's like close to a hundred of them. So hopefully we're just walking down the streets so we can get a good glimpse of them. Denver at some of these parts has protected bike lanes. You can see the curbs here and then there's parking and then the road traffic. This is 18th Street coming up. And we are also along Wincoop Street. Denver is also home to the instance where I was most frightened at one time during a travel video. I've told this story in several videos. But I'll tell it real quick. I actually went across the street and get in the shade rather than walking in the sun. Like I said, I have... I left Cleveland early this morning where it was 60 degrees in the morning and the airports are not too... Uh, not too not too warm so it was fine wearing this throughout the airport and I do have shorts on because when it's around 60, 65 or even 70 I like having shorts but then a light jacket on top but then as I was coming to do this video in downtown Denver I looked at the weather and I was like oh shoot it's going to get up to the low to mid 90s today Presently, it's about 86, 87 degrees. But the reason I still have it on is because my backpack is full and I could carry it in my arm and I might do that later if I get too hot. But right now, I'm just gonna try to bear with it. Keep both of my hands free because a lot of times I like to hold the camera I'm recording with with one hand and then pull out my phone with the other hand to snap some pictures. Coming up ahead of us is McGregor Square. interesting Denver has a bicycle signal that gets their own red green and yellow light and this is also kind of interesting it's almost like you have traffic coming off of an off-ramp I don't know if that's off of a highway
no traffic's coming either direction. But again, we've got somewhat dedicated bike lanes. I did walk McGregor Square once a little bit and I ended up going that direction and I th thought it was pretty neat looking. You're kind of surrounded by restaurants and hotels. You see you got an interlink up there connecting the two. But I also see that sun glare just to the side of me is blocking the full view of putting the camera in that direction. And they're playing music outside this bar, so I'm going to cut the footage for a second. So right here we have an overpass, a bunch of bikes, oh uh, sorry, bike racks rather. And you know what, the one time when I walked through that McGregor Square and I took the diagonal, I went that way. I ended up going up the street and further up to get to Coors Field. But here's a shot of Gate E. I didn't realize they had a bridge that actually went over on this side. I don't know if there is anything else besides Gate E. But that's nice that there's a walkway here. I have a feeling I really can't go anywhere else besides this. You see the walkway goes over. Oh no, actually, it looks like I could take the stairs and get right up there. I don't think this goes anywhere though. Yeah, that's that's a dead end right there. And that's what I found the one time I walked around the other side of the stadium. I wasn't on this side, I was on the complete opposite side. And there wasn't much to see over there. I want to make sure the camera doesn't get too overheated, so I'm going to uh, occasionally chop the footage. Like, I'll, I'm going to pick up the footage once I get down there by the statue. But it's nice that they have these benches along the way here, so you could sit down maybe during the evening. I'm telling you, there's a few cities online that when I look at them, look at certain buildings, like that right there reminds me of the construction of the Sherwood Williams building. Oh look, we've got a Salesforce building. I, wonder, I, don't, I don't know if they're headquartered here. I wonder where they're headquartered. They just had an earnings report. The Branch Ricky Award featured here. All right, so what I'm going to do is because we're getting close to the Arts District, I want to cross over get to the side of the street where you got some more shade but this is Blake Street that I'm on right now so I'm gonna take Blake up to I think it's 26th Street and then I'll make a right turn and we should start seeing murals and this district is short for Rhino uh, River River North Arts District, R-I-N-O. Alright, so we got a little bit of shade hugging the fence here for whatever construction project. It's nice that they have a Go Rockies banner 
crossing the street, celebrating their 30 year anniversary. Look at that excited dog. Very wide sidewalks. I wonder if they have any like street vendors on those sidewalks during games. Looks like someone unfortunately scavenged through the garbage can there. I know other parts of Denver that I've been in going the opposite direction. I've always made note that there's a significant homeless problem over there, including the story where someone tried to swing a pipe at several kids' heads and I wasn't too far from, away from the incident. That was like a year and a half ago, I think. But from what I read online, it seems like this area over here is supposed to be uh, safer and not really populated with the homeless population. Try seeing what street this is. Is this 26th yet? Uh, it doesn't really say what street it is here unless I'm missing it. Oh, behind me, 22nd. So I got a little bit ways to go. place called Ian's Pizza by the Slice, although I don't know if they're open right now. Some street dining here at the Cherry Cricket. I'm sure it's a popular post-game or pre-game place for the Colorado Rockies games. You can also get $25 Coors Light buckets. This next block here looks like a parking lot and it's in direct sunlight, so I may skip that as far as recording goes. Alright, we're a block shy of 26th. But I do see some artwork starting here at the corner of Blake and Broadway. You can see the mural on the side of that building for Breckenridge Brewery. And over there you can see some more artwork starting. Some unique street designs in uh, in Denver so far that I've noticed between the integrated bike lanes and traffic at a diagonal and weaving in and out. You can see this is part of the Denver bikeway. That looks like an old style sculpture. The steps are kind of like the rainbow LGBT, but that area sort of also looks like it hasn't been tended to in a bit. Oh shit. If you heard that, that was a car accident right there. See, I was just talking about these. Sucks anytime you hear that. Oh, what? I want to say, fortunately, somewhat. 
doesn't seem like there was like a sig significant in the sense of deathly injured. Just it seems like they had a relatively soft collision. All right, we're going up 26th Street now. Some of these murals might be hard to track down because they're like on the sides of buildings, I think, or on the upper level. Yeah, like some of the artwork might be down this alley. I'm not gonna walk all the way down at the immediate moment, but let's just take a look at the one that's real close to us. There is one alley that specifically is called like Rhino, Rhino Mural. Let's head on back to 26th. Oh, see, so you can see on the side, and fortunately that sun glare is right above us. You can see that same style of uh, artwork is, that we saw in the previous building a couple blocks ago is there. There's another artwork mural here. Darn, I wish I could get shots without the sun glare all in the way. This one I can step up to at least and... Geez, I have to really step up to it to get out of the sun glare. Wrong time of day to be filming this, I guess. There you go, there's a shot without the sun interfering. It kind of looks like a mixture of the mountains being reflected. So this next street is Walnut. There are a couple of murals down to the left on Walnut. Walnut looks like a fun looking street with businesses too mixed in. Yeah, I don't know how well this neighborhood will show up on video, but it is nice like when you're looking around in person, you kind of get that 360 view of all these murals. This might be the alleyway that I was referring to, where they have a lot of murals. So before I go fully into that, let's check out the artwork on the side of First Draft. And I'll always love seeing all the bike racks. And it looks like this alleyway actually begins down this way. So I'm going to walk down this way and then circle back. Look at even like the door like that has fully covered. So I'm going to walk first showing this side. And then I'm going to come back around and show the other side to my right. Yeah, this gives me reminders of I'm sure there's a lot of places in the country like this, but when I went to St. Louis early, earlier this year for my conference and they had the Mural Mile where a bunch of street artists uh, painted along that wall going on and on and on. And then I'll pause there 
and turn and go this way because otherwise I'll get back into sunlight. Some of this is just more graffiti writing. I think as we get further on down, we'll venture into some artwork that is more like a completed mural with a specific design intended as opposed to the lettering. This one, look at this cool scene. See, this is what I'm talking about. I, I love it when there's the more, like less of the word art and actual like scenery depicted. What the scenery means, I have no clue, but it looks like it's at return to dust is the one who artist that one. Even got the dumpsters. Oh, not, I guess they're not really artwork on the dumpsters. It's more uh, spray painted over with. Oh, got a vehicle coming behind me. So yeah, so this half is actually still open to vehicle traffic. But this half over here, you can see you've got the bollards. So it truly is a closed alleyway. And I think you'll see more of the, a few more of the dedicated murals here that are advanced. Looks like this is a pool hall. I actually need to get back to capture the full perspective of this one. And also on this pole here, there's some like skeleton artwork. Got a black cat here, kind of subtle. And then a woman with a black cat. Oh, this one's dominated by the black cat. Must have been the cat lover for sure. Oh, this is fascinating too. It's a faux radio shack that acts like it's been taped up and taken over by whatever these electronics are. Oh, yeah, geez. <laughs> See? You gotta make sure you're looking all the directions, too. Wow, you know what's crazy? When I'm up close to this, I can't see the woman's face, but like on the camera, I can see it. As you go further back, it comes a little bit more into form. But otherwise, it just like up close looks like a bunch of circular lines. I missed that up there too. There's like a Tin Man.
over here a tiger eating some ice cream. Yeah, because I'm was close to the side of the building, I couldn't show all that artwork as I was walking by. That's why I'm turning around here. All right, let's see here. Where should I go next for the artwork? I mean, that street was definitely worth it. And the side of this building, look, just keeps on going and going. I know the alleyway continues this way, but it's not as uh, extensive as, it's more like that first alleyway we popped down. Look, I'm telling you, it's just a bunch of random things here, like even this bike rack. Like, what is this? Like a uh, certain rock material on it. All right, I'm going to walk up to Larimer Street. Look, even some of this stuff is unique. The bench made out of almost, I think this is all like old material that it's constructed out of. Like, this looks like beams that would have been off of a highway. Metal Lark. Hello to whatever this thing is. <laughs> Slice window is open at this place. Oh, it says head around to the back alley for service. So right away the vibe of this portion of the street looks a little more deserted. And we are in direct sunlight again, so I gotta be, make sure I get out of the heat. And yeah, my device was starting to overheat a little bit, but at the corner of Laramere and 29th Street, you can see they have the street blocked off. So you can have extensive outdoor dining. I'm gonna walk down there a little bit, and then I'll see how much more I continue because the sun is starting to cook me. But I did see a couple of murals over here near Walnut, that looked pretty good. Mural of just a ball of yarn? I don't know. You can see over here, the mural that says Justice. And there's more murals always popping up in the area, too. And then if we turn around... On this end of the street... Big mural that says Colorado. Forgive me for not knowing who that is symbolizing, perhaps. back up to Laramere and 29th. Now a lot of these places probably aren't open right now because it's still 1126 so they either may be open for dinner time 
or maybe lunch. But you can definitely tell that these places are probably pretty busy during the evening hours and they have the artistic feel on them as well. There's like artwork intertwined in. I was just thinking to myself, I'd love to have some ice cream, but that place there called Heaven doesn't look like they're open right now. I have to check their hours. Oh, what is this? Empire. Looks like a market of sorts. Empire Collective. Please excuse the dust. Looks like they're renovating a bit. It'd be nice to grab a picture of, though. Like those people were saying, they just said interesting area, but you know, there's a lot of stuff, but it's so quiet. Like with this whole setup, you would especially since we are near lunchtime, you would think that you would see like crowds of people flocking here, Shake Shack in a fancy building. Yeah, a little unusual. I mean, it's like a ready-to-go area dedicated for food, but nothing, no, no real activity or people there. So I don't know what to think of that. As we're crossing 30th. a little bit of a Mickey Mouse head on the building there. Sort of random. But we are still in Rhino. You can see the sign here, Rhino, where art is made. Saying Curtis Park is to the right, 38th and Blake Station to the left. 38th and Blake Station was actually one of the train stops, uh, the one before Union Station, or maybe two of them before Union, I can't remember. Cali's Cannabis Shop. So you can see like on 31st Street, there's murals. It's sort of a dead end, but there's murals along the side of that building. Yeah, but still, sorry, not to beat a dead horse, but like, where's the activity at? I feel like it's not an abandoned, like it's not like you're seeing vacant businesses. I have to imagine evening time is where the vibe is in this area. Even down this way, I'm not going to walk all the way down there, but you've got a mural. Pretty detailed guitar player, skyline, ice cream cart person. So yeah, if you are visiting Denver and you are into the arts and love seeing murals, maybe stop by here. Maybe not during the heat of the day or during heat of the summer when it's like 95 or when you're you know have your luggage with you but definitely worth keeping in mind 
And there is a map online that you can look at where it pinpoints the majority of the murals. Yeah, see, even something like this. Like, look, it's clearly not abandoned. This place called Gold Point. All these hours just must not be during the daytime. That's the only explanation, because there's literally, like, no customers. So none of them must be open. See, this place booked me on Airbnb. I think I'll go down to 32nd here and soft end the video, meaning plan on ending it and chalking that up as the Rhino Arts District. But if I encounter something else along the way, I'll be sure to include that as supplemental footage. If you enjoyed this walkthrough from downtown Denver and through the Rhino Arts District, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time.